Roxy and I'm gonna work on my little Fomimo book for a while. Um, I got a lot of comments when I first did this, the last video I did on this, um, that, you know, it, it prints it off basically like a receipt that you get at a store. And over time those will fade. They say that the printing on this will last um, two to five years. And a lot of people said, you know, why would you want something that's going to fade? You're not going to be able to see the photo, whatever. Um, I also got a few comments about how, you know, it causes cancer. I've not seen anything on that. Um, and I think, you know, as far as that goes, I think if there was a problem with it causing cancer, we'd have a lot of cash register or cashiers and sales clerks that had cancer. I think we'd hear about it. Um, that's just my take on that. I understand that the, f the photos you take, you, you print out, they're not going to last forever. Um, and for me, I don't care. I, um, here's how I look at journaling. It's just kind of an emotional thing at the minute. Um, I've got a lot of pictures of Sheila, thousands of them got thousands of pictures of my husband and um, I think for journalers it's just kind of an emotional thing that's current you know um, I hate to say it but nobody's gonna want these books when we die um, I've experienced three different things one of them was um, my sister's best friend her father had a huge storage bin full of books, of uh, notebooks. He he would fill like one of those spiral bound books, you know, with note paper. He'd fill one of those like in a month, if that. And there were just hundreds of them. When he died, um, she has, I think she has eight siblings. There's at least nine or ten in the family. Not one of them wanted them. Nobody wanted them. Um, in fact, when I went to my sister's house, the plastic storage bin was sitting outside the back door, and I kind of was peeking in it to see what it was. And when I realized it was somebody's journals, I asked, you know, I asked them, I go, what's that? And they told me it's Ann's dad's and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, I go, well, why are they outside? And they're like, well, they just got to wait till the dumpster or the garbage recycler guy comes. And I'm like, well, did you keep any? Are you going to read them? And Ann said, well, I kept a couple, but you know, I don't know if I really want to read them. Or... And this is a baby boomer, mind you, where we kind of like to collect some stuff, you know. Um, the second one, the second experience, um, a neighbor's mom died. Her parent, yeah. No, they didn't die. They were already gone. Well, they died a few years ago. Um, she is from a family of 13 kids. Her husband's from a family of 14 kids. So they have huge families. Not one person in Marion's family wanted the letters that her mom, it's a big box of letters, that her mom and dad wrote back and forth to each other when they were courting or whatever. And nobody wanted them. And she was giving me stuff like... Um, Bristol board from work because she was they were moving I forgot to tell her that they were moving they're downsizing and so she was giving me like Bristol board um, cellophane bags you know stuff I could use for crafts and I told her I said well you know I don't want to get greedy but if you're throwing away any kind of you know I explained what ephemera was to her you know sales receipts um, letters you know postcards any kind of anything. I said, invoices, whatever. Um, I'll take them. And she goes, oh, I just threw away my parents' um, letters that they wrote to each other. I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah, I just threw a box away. Nobody wanted them. She, and I said, well, did you read them? <laughs> Me again. I'm like, did you read them? Oh, gosh, no, I couldn't have. No, but none of us wanted to read them. And I thought, oh, my God. I said, Mary, and I said, crafters wouldn't care if they read them or not they want that stuff I go any stuff like that that you're getting rid of let me know 
if if you want, I can find you a source for it. So, and she was just like, nah, nobody's going to want it, and threw it away. Threw everything away after that. Fast forward to this year, and my parents, um, when my dad was in, he was in Guadalcanal as a CB in World War II, and um, they wrote back and forth. My mom got pregnant right before he left with my the oldest sibling. They wrote back and forth. I've um, I had four of my dad's letters, and then my sister saw them and said, "Oh, can I have them? Because I'm getting them all together. You know, she's gonna print them all out or whatever." Well, that was like 20 years ago. I finally got. Let me think. Okay, so I got. She kept my dad's letters, and then I never knew this that my dad kept my mom's letters. So about six months or about a year ago, my brother said, hey, I've got mom's letters. Nobody wants them. Do you want them? I go, heck yeah, because I want to read them. I want to um, put them together, you know, in order and then read them. But then after that, what do you do with them? You know, we don't have, we don't have any kids to leave our stuff to. And I don't want to burden any of my nieces or nephews with our stuff. So I've kind of thought of using my parents' letters. Like each one, each mom and dad both have a box, you know, like a box of letters and envelopes and, you know, everything's with it. It's really cool. But nobody's going to want it. Nobody in my family wants it. Nobody wanted the Victrola until... Everybody got to use the Victrola over the last, what, 40 years? I finally get it, and somebody broke it, so I had to go fix it. But you know, nobody's going to want that. Um, we just don't... I just don't think people are going to want these journals. So long story short, I don't care if this fades out. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah, I do wish it was four color and that it would last, but quite honestly, it doesn't bother me. I mean, it's just a moment, something to pass, you know, a couple minutes. It's quick, easy, fast, and it's just silly, you know? And it makes me feel like I can just do anything with it, and I don't have to sit and worry like, oh, I don't want to ruin the picture, or, you know, do this and make a mistake and wreck the picture. So it's just fun. It's a fun little thing to have. And I, my friends, am enjoying it. So that's my big, huge, two-minute, ten-minute story. But I really in doubt. I mean, if you think about it, ask, you know, ask your kids or whoever you think is going to want these, um, all the journal and your artwork, ask them if they want any of it. You know, especially the generation... The, that are coming up now, um, you know, like, the, I'm not blaming anybody either. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they got a whole different outlook on um, things and stuff. That's why a lot of antique stores are closing, which they're closing all over left and right up here. That's why nobody, you can go to any thrift store and you will always see Huge dish sets, beautiful dish sets. I know I've said this before, my thrift store. I walked in there one day, there was a beautiful set, 12 place settings of wedge wood, which is really expensive. And no, it was there for weeks. Um, we just went garage sailing this weekend. Really? What a surprise. And came upon these young'uns. They were like all in their 20s, really fun people. They had the most gorgeous set of dishes from like um, like the uh, Art uh, Art Nouveau, but they were gorgeous. They were somebody's grandma's or great grandma's probably. They didn't want them. It was twenty bucks, and I'm like, uh, it killed me to not take them, just to save them, because once they're done with their garage sale, pff, those are gone. One of the girls had beautiful teapots that you could tell. Probably were handed down to her. I didn't ask. But I said, how are you be able to get rid of these? And she goes, I know, but I just got to get rid of stuff. 
gorgeous teapots for like a dollar each. And it was just crazy. And I, I don't collect teapots. If I had known somebody that did, I would have called them and said, you want these teapots? Because again, they're just, I mean, right now antique stores are closing left and right. Um, and that's here in the Midwest, which is usually the last man, you know, the last one, last man standing, basically. You know, the East Coast, West Coast, everything happens before it gets here, like maybe a year or two. Kind of slow. But I just really don't have a problem with this. I, you know, it'd be fun if it was four color um, printing that this does. And I can keep this little journal and, you know, until I'm 95 and look at it and go, oh. But um, I, I just don't have a problem with the, um, the obsolescence of it because that all being said, oh, I'm working my little journal right now. My little dispose I'll call it my disposable journal. All right, so this is, um, <sighs> Scrubby's funny. He's really got a great sense of humor. Anyways, one day we're having our little Saturday morning breakfast and we just happened to have some really nice homemade bread. And so we just had peanut butter on toast. Um, so we're reading the paper. That's our ritual. We read the Saturday paper and get all upset because it's got so much crap in it. Anyways, um, I went and did something, came back. And here he had torn this out of the Target ad and put it on my plate and said, finish your breakfast so we can go. <laughs> and I'm like, I did. And I looked on it and I'm like, ah. But that was pretty cute. So um, Babsy Barnes saw it on my I think Instagram or whatever. And she goes, oh, you should use it for a uh, mailing label. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do... I was going to put it in here. But I thought, I'm just going to keep it to be these things. So I think I might use it as a mailing label. It'd be kind of fun. She's the one that cuts out all the little stuff. Like books, little children's, old children's books, ads, whatever. And I'm totally hijacking, scrap lifting, stealing her idea on that. I'll never make it as cute as her. Trust me. But I'll have to show you um, some of the things she's mailed to me. Um, plus, Babs, yeah, I'm real proud if you're watching. Urgh. I did all this the other day. Well, the other few days. So you just cut out, this is from, this book is really cute and a lot of her um, things she cuts out, they're pointing. So she'll have it pointing at your address or just awesome. So I got a few different little books in here. Most of them are this farmer book, but there's other like some Tinkerbell and Dumbo. And then this was a little boy that wanted to go barefoot all the time. Like, can't ya? I mean, we always did. So, here he is with his little... He finally got a pair of cowboy boots and that was it. He fell in love. So, uh, I think that's yeah, that's the little barefoot boy because he was getting, his feet were getting sore. Um, which is kind of weird. I mean, of course, that was an old book. So maybe, who knows? I think I'm going to put this in here. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about with Babsy. There. But this is, I'm clean, we cleaned out the bookcase. And I had a... The St. Paul paper from when Prince died. I had a Minneapolis one, but I sent it to a friend of mine who, um, another crafter, who loves Prince, like has a shrine to Prince. This one is the day that um, Reagan was buried, and I only kept it because when I was in um, New York, we went on a school field trip for New into New York, and this guy, we went to this discotheque, and the guy that owns it, it was like on a weeknight, and there was nobody there but us, and he like pulled out the red carpet. It was a really cool discotheque. I think it was, I can't remember what it was called. 
Ooh, I'd have to. Anyways, he pulled out the red carpet, treated us like royalty. You know, went and got us steaks because they didn't have them. They was just a bar, but we kind of got hungry and, you know, we were going to go eat. And he goes, oh, no, I'll get my. So he had his, like, chauffeur go get them and bring them back. He was the nicest man. We um, stayed there till all hours. And then he had his chauffeur in this, his limousine drive us home. But he said, he goes, hey, grab him a newspaper on their way. So we all got a newspaper. And it was the day that Ronald Reagan was literally throwing his ring in the hat. No, his hat in the ring, his cowboy hat. He was throwing it up in the air um, to run for president. So that's why I kept this because I thought it's kind of, you know, in bookends. But now I'm going to get rid of them because I'm going to give this to my friend. I'll probably keep this because nobody wanted it. And then I had another newspaper that uh, my sister wants. So there's that boring story. Now, I don't know where my scissors are. Oh, there. Okay, so what I do with these little photos is I use the... Um, uh, highlighters, pastel highlighters that I got at Dollar Tree. They work really great. What do I have this for? Oh. They work really well, like the picture I show in the video, I had used Copics on that and it didn't work. So I redid the photo and just did one of these and then this one I left it playing because this was so sad. This is at Bill's um, parents' grave. And it's this little old cemetery that this little Catholic church in town keeps, you know, keeps care of and owns. They keep care of it as, take care of it as in cut the grass, bury the people, you know, get the headstone. Well, we have to get the headstone. But otherwise, there's no, they've got security cameras. But nobody locks or opens the gate because they don't have enough people to, you know, help volunteer. Because they can't pay them. It's just, you know. So, every year we find out that, it, I think it started happening, let me think, uh, three years ago. We put, we always put the flowers out on Memorial Day weekend. So we did that and then came back like a week later to water them. There's no plants. No, it wasn't even plants. We had a plant stand and we used an antique red wing pot for it. Like one of those cool old cemetery pots. The pot was gone. The flowers were dumped out. The pot was gone. We looked around everywhere. Anybody that had those, because we noticed them, you know, because they're those fancy cool old pots. Any of those were gone. Um, and we didn't notice this other part. So I called the cemetery and said, you know, somebody came and ripped off all the, a lot of the old pots, including ours. And they're like, oh yeah, we heard a couple calls. They were, they stole all the brass stars for all the military people. You know, they have little stakes with the star. It's like, who does that? So last year, we just put a plastic pot out. It was fine. This year, we put out another plastic pot with flowers, and then they were really pretty. And then our um, um, sister-in-law put a little hanging basket. Put them out Memorial Day. They were fine, fine, fine until about, when was this? Yeah, Memorial Day. Why is that Memorial Day? Oh, no, da 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 da, -da. This is when we put it out, sorry. Um, I didn't write them. Oh yeah, a month later, we went out all of the plants throughout the cemetery were gone, except for this one area when you first pull in. There's an area where it's all kids and babies and then some military and, you know, that they have like three cameras on. Where up here, they've the gardener was telling my sister-in-law that the people figured out where the cameras are and they can just have at it. So all of our area up here, 
and then there's the area in front. All of the plants were gone. Like, I just can't believe it. So, people, there are people out there that really suck. Who steals from a grave? You know, ugh, makes you sick. So anyways, here we go. I wish I had purple. But isn't that stinky? Oh my God, that's just crazy. So I'm just gonna do like something around him. Poor Prince. They gotta get a handle on this drug epidemic. You know, they just let it go and let it go and let it go. It's like they're, these drug companies should be sued by all the people that lost someone because they got addicted to this stuff and then it's just terrible. But, you know, you turn a blind eye and you don't see it. So there. Good old Prince. My girlfriend and I partied with him once. This was before he was, you know, he was popular in Minneapolis. And we went, we met this girl at First Avenue, which was where Prince, you know, kind of made his name as a bar in Minneapolis. And I know I've told this story before. Anywho, um, she goes, one night she goes, and we just met her there, and then we'd call and say, hey, we're coming down, you know, we're coming over. So then she'd meet us there on Saturdays. So um, one night we were there, and it was kind of slow, which is ironic for First Avenue because it never was. It's always a big party. Um, but she goes, hey, uh, my friend's... Um, or she was talking about this bar a couple blocks away. And she goes, yeah. She goes, a bunch of my friends are always there. Or hang out there. You want to go over there? And we're like, sure. So we go over and it's an upstairs bar. Um, I don't even remember what it's called. I remember where it is. And we go up. And it's just this little old bar. It's got like wooden booths along a wall. And a big wooden bar. And not and kind of a back room with the pool table. But the, otherwise that was it. It was just really small and... Not much to it. So we're sitting in a booth and this guy comes up, sits down, and he, you know, she knows him really well. And she's like, oh, you know, this is Prince. And we're like, hey. It was really nice. We just sat and talked. He bought us drinks, you know, a few times. And I think we were there for about two hours with him. And then um, he told us about this party over in Edina. And we were like, oh, okay. Um, so we went to that. We took her because she took the bus. She didn't drive. Um, so we took her. I got my wallet stolen out of my purse. and But it was, a, it was packed. You could barely even walk in this place. It was like a house. Or it was a house. Anyways, he didn't. I don't think he came or went. Because I don't remember him being there. He might have been there. Because it was packed. I wonder if he was. My girlfriend doesn't remember if he was or not either. I wonder if he was, though. I can't remember that part. It was more about my wallet getting stolen at that point. Plus, we didn't even know who he was from Adam. But I'm thinking now, it was so jam-packed, he must have been there because, you know, I don't know. I'm guessing. This looks really dumb. So, I'll, I'm going to write... So... This will probably be more about my cleaning up my art layer than partying with Prince. So, and I think what I'm doing the color is just to kind of sort of highlight what's going on. So when it does fade, there might be a small memory of what it was. So that's kind of crazy.
Oh yeah, so then, I don't even know what time of year that was. I know we were just walking around outside. So it was probably a nice like spring, it wasn't winter. And then that fall after, you know, like the state fair starts uh, like August 22nd till Labor Day. So this was after the fair. I get, uh, my wallet just shows up in the mailbox. Like literally, wasn't in an envelope or anything. And there was a letter that said, I found your purse or your wallet at the fair and wanted to get it back to you. And my checkbook was still in it, albeit there were a lot of checks missing. And they had practiced writing my name on some of the checks. And, and ironically, at the same time, I was working at a bank. I was a head teller at First Merchants Bank. And so I was like, I'd already stopped the checks. But my credit cards were gone. And they that they had gotten like, I think it was 600 bucks. At the time, that was like 6,000, you know. And it was a, really a drag. But I they didn't cash any checks because I immediately stopped and being the bank that I worked at they didn't get any very far with that but isn't that weird to find out the fair because we were way the heck over in Edina that oh, was weird but at least I got my wallet back Oh, this is cute. I like that washi. So, what am I going to write about? Where, what have I been using? Oh, yeah, pen. So that part... Where's the pen? When did Prince die? I wonder if I can see. Friday, April 22nd. Wow. Twenty sixteen, man. Um when was this one? Oh, I didn't take a good picture of it. Maybe I did. I don't know if I kept it though. All right, so here's my, what I did. So I'm just a recap. There's the first one. Here's what I did today. For my Ronnie Reagan newspaper. And then after that I did, we went to the Minnesota Zoo last week, or two weeks ago. So two weeks ago or last week. Anyways, they had llamas and a really cool moose. They had a ton. Huge bears from Russia, lions, leopards, not lions, tigers and leopards. Um, all kinds of stuff. A big, huge manatee. So, and there's Sheila. Her ear, when she shakes her head, her ear bends up funny and then it sits there. So, I got her twice in the last couple of weeks. And she kind of looks at you like, quit laughing at me. What are you laughing at? So I just did those two. And then I've got more stuff coming up. So, um, you know, in that rant I did about people not wanting anything, I'm sure you've got people that want it. But in my case, there ain't going to be nobody that wants my little goofy writings or journals or anything. I mean, there just isn't. Um, it's just something fun for me to do. I'm not going to expect anybody to care about it. And that's fine with me. So, thanks for watching and see you later. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, I got off track of my schedule uh, I did really well in July for taping and putting stuff up, but I've had a lot of stuff going on in my life, 
that has been um, challenging to say the least. So I think in about two weeks I'll be able to get back on track and do more crafting and plus I've got the craft show fair, craft fair stuff coming up. Um, got some new ideas. Going through all my stuff, I found a couple of boxes of things that I bought I think two years ago to make or to use to make something. So I'm excited about that. And um, yeah, so that's it. And we'll see you later. Bye.